Hi everybody, um, this is uh, episode two of Your Story is Our Story. Today we're having going to have a lot of fun with Feast, uh, with Lee White, who runs runs the company. So welcome along, Lee, lovely to see you. Um, oh, you're, nice you're see you guys. As fit and well as ever. Um, <laughs> uh, I've just been to the gym this morning, actually. So. Okay, for you. Well <laughs> yeah. done. An hour and a half in the gym, I'm going to sit down half of it. <laughs> Good on you. Um I need to go to the gym, so uh, maybe maybe you'll influence me a bit there. Um, I'm, I'm, we've been working with you. You bought your machine probably about four and a half years ago, I think, possibly. Um, um, yeah, 2016, I think. 2017? Yeah, yeah, I think 2016, yeah. Interesting. One of the things that um, I did want to mention is that we, as a, as a company that designs and builds the products, um, we listen a lot to our customers and... Uh, I've said this before in, in another interview, but uh, we our, our, our third slogan, which is the one we use at the moment, which is make more money, work less hours, have more fun, which you'll see behind me on the wall here. Um, that was really stimulated by you, Lee. Um, uh, when we did an interview and get a case study with you a few years ago, you said this, you know, I'm, I'm working less hours, I'm having more fun and I'm making more money, you know? Um, uh, and I thought, you know what? that's a that's just brilliant that's exactly what we want to stand for here um to the point where we give you an award for for being <laughs> somebody who's actually contributed significantly to our business um so i just thought it'd be nice for people to listen to you today to hear your story the yeah. good and the bad um the tough times and the good times uh and what is it about your business that you think um has made a difference to you um uh, so I'm just going to ask you a few questions. First of all, tell us a wee bit about you. Like, tell us where you came from um, and what you're doing now. Um, yeah, so well, I've been in the food industry pretty much most of my life. Uh, I did have a little break um, in the middle of it all. Um, but yeah, we've got, um, got an Italian uncle. Um, ran a, an Italian restaurant in Woven, which is a lovely little village not far from where we live at the moment. So I started, yeah, my kitchen, usual usual chef people, pot washing, that sort of stuff was a teenager. Um progressed you know into pasta and um sauces and bits and pieces i remember rightly and basically taught by my auntie um who's obviously a really talented chef um and continued that for quite a number of years but then i left left that sort of world um i didn't like all the long weekends and obviously all the long evenings all my mates were out having fun etc um so i went into the motor industry for about 10 years and then decided i just had enough really of the, the sort of corporate life um everything in that entail as much as the, the money was very good um i found i needed to do something on my own i wanted to branch out obviously always continue to love the food and cooking and eating out quite a lot um so it's decided to do something on my own i started up my own business um, nothing like what i'm doing now but it was basically off the back of um my knowledge of uh, working in an italian restaurant basically making sauces condiments dressings, that sort of stuff and um, going so we ended up just going around farmers markets um Selling, selling those for a, a number of years and it was great fun. Um, we ended up doing a little bit of um, corporate banquet um, sort of work, did a few weddings and bits and pieces. And then that's when I decided, right, I need to do something a little bit different here. We're, we're making a lot more money doing this than selling balsamic vinegar dressings and bits and pieces that we were producing. Um, so I think it must have been about 2010, 2011, we decided to go right, we're going to go more into direct catering. Um, and, and it started then progressing from that. I mean, I think we started off with sort of basic, you know, gas grill, burgers, sausages, you know, sort of fairly, fairly run in the middle stuff. Um, and then again, slowly sort of, um, we started adding in more elaborate dishes. We were doing more, a um, lot more corporate functions at, at that time. Um, and then farmers market started to die slowly they were you know losing like anything in england you know everybody goes mad for the first number of years and then you know they want the next best thing and that's when we i started to notice the street food scene was starting to bubble up and over over a couple of year period it started to see like just the odd one or two street food stalls would pop up into within two years you know half the market was street food and it was busy it was bustling there was every food from under the sun available um, the quality of the food was amazing, um, you know, really talented chefs. And some of them, you know, were, were chefs that were working in some really high-end restaurants or coming out of that. Again, on the same thing, that they didn't have to, they didn't have to work long hours into the, into the night and every weekend because they could come out on street food market, sell their wares and their produce, 
um, direct and two, three o'clock in the afternoon, they're done and dusted, wrapped up and going home. Um, and that's when I thought I want some of that. So how did you find us, Lee? Um, I believe it was, I might, not, was it Street Scene, Street, yep, street, street Scene, yeah. Um, the magazine. Is that right, a Mac, like a yeah. publication, yep. a long line yep. publication? It well have been, um, absolutely, yeah. I think via NCAS as well, because we we've been members of NCAS yeah. for yeah. the eight, eight, nine years. Um, um, yeah, so I've just, just come across that. Really. I mean, obviously, I sort of Googled and looked and um, had a look around at what was available. There wasn't anything, you know, there was plenty, of, <coughs> excuse me, plenty of barbecues and stuff out there, but not on the commercial side of things and quality product and the, the I obviously knowing that I didn't want to work like massively long hours and loads and loads of weekends, I needed something that could have a good high high output. Yeah. Um, that I could do over a lunch period. Obviously, if I, I corporate sort of lunches, you know, at the time was in when in central London, we wanted to set up, but we knew we've only got like a two hour window to serve however many people we need to do. So knowing we you know we've got to serve a, a reasonable volume, it needs to have that capability of, of the speed of cooking. Hot holding was obviously really important, and actual service, and obviously the look as well, um, which was really, really important. So tell me a wee bit about once when you made the jump uh, and moved to charcoal grilling, um, what did you notice? What, 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 how did things change? Um, initially, it's, it's the theatre of it. Um, it's the theatre of the flames and the smoke, the smells. I mean, the smell is the first thing that just draws everybody in. Um, you know, even now, everybody, you know, I mean, we're, we're in regular locations, everybody sees us there every single week. Um, but they they still like, I mean, I get immune to it. I mean, people say, oh, that smell, I can't, I can't smell, I smell every day now. And I'm sort of totally new to it. But customers, they literally do follow their notes, and that's not an exaggeration. Um, yeah. You know, we, we set up on a number of like high streets and that, and it, you know, the wind takes it and wafts it down the high street. Um, and yeah, we use, we use a combination of charcoal and, and wood, I think, as you know, we use all various different woods as well to add, add some a little bit different, some extra flavours in there and get that, that real sort of nice smokiness going into the meats, which, um, which can't be replicated with, with gas or electric at all. Tell us a wee bit about your lifestyle, how, what difference Trailblazer has made to... So to, yeah, um, oh, a huge difference. As far as, <clears throat> I mean, I probably work four days a week on average now. Um, rarely work weekends. Got a teenage son that's, you know, going to see one of be off with all his mates. So I knew time was was limited um, that I'm going to have those weekends with him. So yeah, he has schooling during the week. Um, so I thought now's the time. Let's let's take the break. Let's not work many weekends. We just do the odd, odd little show or event that you know that we fancy doing. Um, but on the whole, we're going to work during the week, and, and I'd say I'd generally work four, maybe five days, depending on what's on. Um, and that's thanks to the Trailblazer because um, that's given us that capability of putting that volume out um, over lunch period. I mean, we serve probably an average 180, 200 covers every lunch. Um, we're 758 pound a head on average. So, you know, that's enough. You know, we're not in it to make millions of pounds. Um, don't need to. Um, you know, fortunately, we've got another business within within our family. So, you know, the two combined, it, it's it's a nice little lifestyle. It gives me also the opportunity to help out at the farm as and when that needs to be. Um, but yeah, the trailblazers give opportunity to, to pull away from I mean, you see some cages work six, seven days a week, all hours, and they're to and throwing and backwards and forwards, and, and and that's not what I wanted. Tell me, um, what what's what's sort of what's your menu? What what do you uh, what do you serve up? And and what is what what does the market buy? I mean, a lot of people start off with a trailblazer and they've got all these ideas and fancy menus and stuff like that. Um, what is what's 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 the big hit? What's the big thing? Um, so I have, I basically have a set, a main set menu, which is predominantly char grilled wraps. So they are a, a tortilla wrap with, with various fillings. We do chicken tikka, we do harissa lamb, we do steak. Um, we do a vegetarian and vegan option, obviously including free, all that sort of stuff. So they're, they're predominantly wraps because we're, we're, you know, 90% of the time we're serving lunch, lunch service. So it's something easy that you can get hold of in one hand. You can munch as you walk in along. Um, or take it back to the office, take it back to your home, whatever you're doing. So that's the main, th the main sort of group of the menu we do. And then we always have a special that we change once or twice a week. 
Um, we've just gone on to our Christmas menu. So we've got three specials on that, um, which will run throughout the whole of December, obviously, you know, Christmas orientated produce. Um, so that, that's predominantly what we do. Uh, we progressed from a canopy setup to a, a converted horse box, um, which we had built this year for us. We knew the beginning of this, this year. So <clears throat> we wanted to come away from the canopy setup, etc be a little bit more professional in our look but again but we also wanted to retain the trailblazer so it's how we were going to do that that was our first challenge um so the initial thing was to buy a truck food truck and then we'll tow the trailblazer behind it um but the only thing i don't like about those is they sit quite high and you look down on your customers and your customers can't see what's going on and obviously with a canopy set up and tables and the trailblazer people can always see all of that and that's one of the draws you know, it's, it's very visual. What we do as well, we prep everything in front of you. There's lots of elements that go into the into the final dish. So people, not everybody wants everything that goes in it, but they so they can see it all laid out. And they'll, they'll look, no, I don't want jalapenos. I don't want those you know, olives or whatever going in there. Um, if it was in a big truck like that, that would take that away. We'd either have to run through every single element you know, of food, which would just take forever. We, you know, we'd still need to have a speed of service. So then we looked at a horse box because they sit way, way lower. They're literally only six inches off the ground. I thought, well, that would be perfect. But how on earth are we going to get? We can't tow that and then tow the trailblazer. And then I come across a chap that had built a pizza oven in one that slid out in, onto the, to the ramp down door. Um, so I contacted him and said, look, this is what we've got. Can you do the same as that? But it, it will go into the back so we can drop the door down, slide the trailblazer out onto the back door continue cooking as we were, and then when we're ready to go, we empty the all the ash out, slide it back in, drop the hatch down, and away we go. So I sent him all the dimensions. He didn't have a computer or anything. It was traditional old school carpenter, and it looks fantastic um, yeah. in the amount of comments we got. Um, but it's also, again, it's way speeded. Within 15 minutes now, we can literally throw the front hatch up, roll the trail page out the back, light it, and we're, we're literally ready to go. Do you have to do any marketing? No, only social media. Yeah. Um, that is literally the only, I don't do any advertising anywhere. Um, it is purely all done through social media. Um, because I'm not, I don't actively go out looking for venues and, um, stuff like that. I mean, I, I just basically let people come to me. As I said, I, I don't want to work loads of weekends. I don't want to work six, seven days a week. So I don't actively go out hunting things, but obviously people do contact me. They've seen the, you know, the trailblazer about, and they've smelt the trailblazer about. Um, so they tend to sort of hunt me out on, on Facebook or Instagram. Um, and I'm quite into photography as well. So, you know, I always try and make the images of the food and everything we do, you know, look as good as they can. Um, and, and just let that do its talking really. What's your favorite feature of a trailblazer? um ooh, it's got a few good i mean i think it's the 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 gullwing doors i think that's brilliant um and it's the it's its capability of being it doesn't matter if it's chucking down the rain um obviously you know this country we have a fair bit of that um so there wasn't i mean when we found you guys that was one thing we did well if we have a barbecue then we've got to have a canopy over it then it's going to get full up of smoke um obviously with the trailblazer it can be outside it can be throwing it down the rain and we're completely fine. You know, the, the charcoal bed's still roaring away. You say we just drop one door down and it gets a bit blowy. Um, and that, yeah, that's got to be the best thing is it's, it's capability that we can work all year round and we haven't got to worry, worry about the weather at all. Brilliant. One last thing then, Lee, um, uh, it's been a really interesting time um, and appreciate your time. One last thing is if for people listening to this um, and they're not sure whether they should take the leap or not, what would you say to them? Oh, go for it. Don't just, just go for it. You won't, um, if you've got a thing, as long as, uh, as long as you've got an idea of what you want to do, um, and it's different, don't, don't copy somebody else just because somebody else might be doing, or you might perceive you, you might look at them online and think, oh, they're doing really well, let's just do that. You know, just have a look around. I mean, you know, every, every marketplace is different in different areas. Um, I mean, I've got lots of street food friends all over the country that we've met on various bits and pieces. Down in Cornwall, fish is a big seller. So there's lots of you know fish street food, but it's not a really a big seller in this area. We're predominantly a pig and, and beef market um, around here because it's a big and farming. So obviously you need to, to look at what your clients, you know, what do your clients do, um, like to eat? Look at look at what the local restaurants, the independents are doing. 
and that and, and hone something around that. Um, don't skip on the quality of ingredient. Don't just buy the cheapest stuff from the local cash and carry because it won't work. It won't last. You need need a good product um, and a good image, good brand image, obviously. Um, spend a little bit of time. Social media is well, one, it's free. So don't pass up on that. Um, doesn't yeah, it's just your time. Um, so Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, if you want to use that sort of thing, um, you know, make your images look good. You know, you don't have to be a professional photographer, but spend a little bit of time, I think, with your products and, you know, look at the background. You know, there's a dirty old dishes in the background, you know, move all them out of the way. Just get a nice little background or some sheets to, to make them look good. Um, but yeah, go for it. And the Trailblazer, it, as I say, if, if you want to work six, seven days a week, that's fine. You know, you're going to make some serious, serious money if you want to work them out. But also if you don't want to, if you want to, you know, just work three, four days a week and still have a reasonable income, it's a brilliant bit of kit to allow you to do that. Well, Lee, it's been a pleasure working with you and it's been lovely that we've been keeping, uh, keeping a track on you. And we'll, no worries. No, it's been we'll great. continue to keep a track right. on you and um, really appreciate the time. Hopefully uh, those of you who are listening today will have enjoyed this and maybe you've got a few wee takeaways choose the pun um, uh, from Lee's advice today and any of you who are wondering or whatever you know give us a shout and uh, we would be delighted to chat to you look forward to the next one the next one will be another interesting person that we have been working with for some time uh, who's got a different story to tell and uh, we really thank you for your time and see you at the next one thank you Lee very much we wish no you worries. And have Thanks, a very guys. happy Christmas. Take care. You too. Cheers. Bye-bye.